Welcome to the next podcast in Millinery Info. I'm your host, Lauren Ritchie. Thank you for joining me today for this episode. Today we welcome Belinda Osborne of Peacock Millinery back to the podcast. Belinda joined us last year to talk about her winning piece for the VRC Flemington My Millinery Award in 2021. And today we welcome her back as the winner of the 2022 Millinery Australia Design Award. Thank you to our podcast sponsors for making this episode possible. Best Western Apollo Bay Motel and Apartments, House of a Dawn, Hatters Millinery Supplies, Lifted Millinery, Be Unique Millinery, Millinery Australia, Judith M Millinery Supply House, Hats by Lego, Hat Academy, Louise McDonald Milliner, and Hat Mags. You can find a link to each of these businesses in our show notes. That's either in your podcast app or through our website. If you've been enjoying listening to this podcast series, I'd like to invite you to sign up to become a Patreon of Millinery Info. We have a few tiers available. You can sign up and see all the options at www.patreon.com forward slash millinery info. We're so grateful to all of our Patreon supporters and our podcast sponsors. I hope you enjoy this episode with Belinda. Um, thank you so much, Belinda, for joining me again today for Millinery Info, the Millinery Info podcast. And you join me because you are the amazing winner of the Millinery Australia Design Award with your stunning piece. Congratulations. And could you- yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it was uh, a, a last minute decision to, to enter the competition and I um, uh, really uh, appreciated the theme uh, of it this year and just sort of resonated with me and um, yeah my yin yang um, yeah uh, taking the uh, the win for that was just um, oh, wonderful wonderful yeah <laughs> so the theme was counterbalance and what when you saw that what came to mind immediately for you <laughs> Uh, I actually had a, um, a whole different other idea in mind and um, I was sort of when when the design terms came out um, it's my quite a busy time of the year for me um, I'm getting prepared for the Darwin Cup Carnival season so I'm quite um, busy in the studio with the client hats once again so I, I had all these ideas of you know um, hats balancing and tipping in the wind and like all different sorts of um, weird and wonderful things and um, I'm a real literal person so I do love um, it when you look at it and go ah yes counterbalance you know and um, uh, and I ended up going with the yin yang um, in the koi representative um, because my original design was just going to take many 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 hours which I didn't have and um it was sort of last minute uh, and I went no I really want to enter the competition um I really really love the theme so uh, that's when the idea of yin yang came to me and I sort of thought how do I get that yin yang um into headwear in a new and an exciting way and it was he used a used crinoline and bailing in your piece to form the fish and they are pieces of art they just float in the air had you created something like this sculpture work in the crinoline before um in the crinoline it's you know it's it's actually it's actually netting so the the fins of each of the fish are crinoline and then the fish itself the fish body is actually made from chul and bailing um, and I, I do a lot of um, wire work and chul work it's um, I suppose a lot of people sort of say to me I've got two two loves I, I have my feather work that I love to do and then I also have my wire work that I love to do and with the wire work chul just works um, sensationally as a, um, an addition to that because in the old old days when how I learned to make millinery was it was by wire and then you covered it with fabric it was quite it's quite can be quite heavy and cumbersome and um 
you know, a lot looking. <laughs> so I, I, I've always wanted to strip that right back. And uh, I love the bones of millinery, as I call it. So I, I, that's what I did with the fish. It was sort of, I really wanted to strip everything right back so that you focused on the, the, the light and the dark. And I love playing with shadows and wire work and netting just does that perfectly in, in a in a and that was sort of how I did that with my 20 uh 2021 no 2020 um my millinery award piece and that was tulle and wire and um playing with light and dark and 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 layering of tulle as well so um, I do, I, I love it and I, I have done it before. Never done fish before though. So that was that was interesting to do, yes. <laughs> and they just danced on the head, which was a stunning frame of the face, which was, yeah, just such a great yeah. representation of the theme. I really, I love, I love symmetry and I love asymmetries. Um, and when they're proportionally balanced, it, it it has a real special feeling about it. And I knew that I wanted to frame the face with the fish and I, I needed to try and figure out, you know, do I just do straight off um, a perfect symmetry? At, but I sort of felt that that might just be a bit too much, whereas just taking it slightly more asymmetrical in the sense of um, how the yin-yang, you know, has a slight bigger section and then they've got the tail section well I did that with the fish as well so and also then generally you know an asymmetrical line is quite wearable by many people as well so you know it, it doesn't have to be so symmetrical but it definitely was um was a tricky situation working with crinoline and trying to get the fins on each fish to be practically the same I wanted both fish to mirror one another so it was trying to make identical things and you probably know how that is Lauren in millinery we're working with products that like to do their own thing sometimes so it was it was quite difficult to do that yes how many fins did you end up making are they just now fins around the house <laughs> I started with a uh, with a piece of crinoline that wasn't the color that I wanted it was a scrap piece and I and I made a beautiful fin uh, and then I tried to replicate that and the the black fin I think it was worked sensationally but the white fin just kept on not playing the game so I, I went through a little bit but not too much so <laughs> And last time, famously, you uh, when we were talking about your winning millinery award piece for Oaks Day, your son gave his feedback to the process and what he liked about the bow and maybe, oh, I kind of like the original version. And you're like, thank you, but this is what we've got now. Did he have any thoughts on the koi? No, he, did. he didn't have uh, any thoughts on the koi, but he definitely thought they were pretty cool. So... <laughs> Yeah, he just sort of he said, "Oh, that's some pretty cool fish," and I'm like, "Yes, yeah, thank you." <laughs> <That's good. laughs> and when we last spoke as well, um, for those who are listening, if you haven't heard Belinda's podcast where we talked about her millinery walk phase, head back and have a listen. You were just in the process of moving, so you've moved and set up a whole new studio. How was that experience? Yeah, yeah, moving um moving houses and studios is a little bit of a nightmare. <laughs> Especially since I hadn't moved for 18 years and we had a yeah, so we had a quite a large property and um we decided to go from the rural area into a suburban area and um and that I mean we just really wanted to do that uh, but it meant downsizing on a lot of things and the studio space was one of those. So I've had to sort of find new ways to work around a new smaller space. And, um, and then also I'm not out, I don't have my big giant, beautiful garden. I, I have a, you know, much smaller suburban garden. And so I was sort of very concerned in the very beginning when we moved here, how, how I was going to get inspired because I get very inspired visually um, 
I could be driving and listening to a song and I just see the song in my head, if you you understand. And um, I go off into my own thing. Not, not great when you're driving, but, you know. <laughs> and, um, exactly, exactly. And then, you know, it's the same as being at home and I see things in home. And one of the first things that happened at home was um, in the new house we had, uh, it came with a giant pot which has lily ponds, li lily pads and, like, uh, and I was in this sort of state of, I don't know how I'm going to get inspired. Um, I was quite sort of thinking, oh, dear me, it's going to be hard to get rolling again. Um, and the next day, this lily just bloomed in the, in the pond. And I was like, oh, my gosh, there go. is inspiration here. And, and then my husband came home with some fish. And so I sort of, I think, like, that's probably where I gravitated to with the fish as well so because I go and I feed the little fish every day in the pond and I talk to them and watch them swim around so you know I, I think I think that's why I've, I've, I've gravitated towards uh, doing the counterbalance theme as a as the koi so it's just what was happening in my in my life at that moment in time I was trying to balance everything and counterbalance everything in my life and and it just sort of has just resonated through through my design, yeah. And your new studio space, did everything fit in or has there been a bit of a shuffle going on? <laughs> yeah, I have some really old um, furniture that I'll never part with. I have a really big old drafters station and then I have, a, um, I have two really uh, big... Um, they're like filing systems for the for the library um, and I keep all my feathers in them and I managed to have fit them in but I've lost one of my working stations unfortunately so I only have the one working station um, that I that I that I have but then you know I, I still like to have um, a lot of hats on display for when people come as well so it just means my my working space I, 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 instead of having a quite a large space to work in, it's just my walking spaces just shrunk a little bit. And I think the biggest thing that I've noticed in, in moving and, and downsizing is uh, I had a really good uh, photo booth sort of set up in my previous um, studio and I could just leave it there. Well, now I have to pack it away and and um you know put it away so that I've got my my space to work in because I get very um you know I often get comments on social media if I, if there's a picture of my studio people go oh it's so it's so neat I can't work in in a mess I, well not a mess but I just can't I can't work when something is gonna touch me or I bump into it or I get very frustrated so I have to I <laughs> have to put everything away and um it, it's it's very time consuming <laughs> and do you have your clients coming into your new space now yeah I, I i have actually my a lot of my clients have been um interstate and international um so most of my clients i'm doing consultations through video consultations so zoom and so forth um which is fabulous and because i've been doing that i've just offered that to my local clients as well and they're taking me up on it you, you know instead of coming out they and and having a design consultation they're they're using the zoom opportunity to talk to me and then and then if we need to um have their dress dropped off and and so forth then we can do that but but yeah it's been um it's uh, it's good yeah it's actually good doing it going digital mm. yeah has that changed the way that you work with your client for a new piece with uh for a, for new clients it's you know it's a it's it's just a matter of building trust with that client um and that's why i sort of thought uh that the digital virtual meetings are they just they're working really well with um with my clients that I've never met before or worked with before they get to see me they get to talk to me um I can then show them sketches that I'm doing straight away for them whilst I'm doing the design consult and they get a real sense of 
oh, this is this is how the process works and we can clear up anything that they need, any questions that they have and, and all the rest of it. Whereas, you know, before um, COVID, I was mainly doing everything through messenger services and um, text and, and things like that, or I would have them come to the studio. So it'd be quite difficult. I only ever had a couple fly up to see me, but um, it was, um, yeah, most of it was done, you know, backwards and forwards through email or through, you know, direct messenger and things like that. So um, incorporating the virtual meetings into the process of, you um, client consultations it's just been it's just worked really really well absolutely and then I, I do it only on a couple of days a week so that I've programmed those days for that type of work so then I can still be creative on other days because it can be quite disruptive having to stop what you're doing in a creative sense and um, you know having to change track and, and and going into an admin or something like that so so yeah no it, it's working really well being um the virtual consults so do you block out each of your days in a different way in your week yeah yeah absolutely um I find it really helpful to um have those days that are set for specific tasks because you know if if you start the day going oh what am I going to do today I tend to, you tend to find that you'll probably waste a lot of the day just figuring out what it is that you should be doing that day. So, you know, if you do Fridays and Saturdays or for when you do your design consult, well, then, you know, every Thursday night, you check your diary, who you got tomorrow, you get prepared for it, and then you're nicely set up and you're ready to go. And then, you know, you do your your, your, your blocking or what have you need to do on a, on a Monday and Tuesday, you do all your... Um, deliveries on a you know a Wednesday or whatever it is that you do if you I find I find that if you have those specific days then you're just forming those habits and that becomes second nature and then you're not actually spending time on thinking about what it is that you necessarily need to do and if you're a creative or a maker time is everything you know, you don't, you don't want to be, um, I've been there. You don't want to be spending 18 hour days in the studio. It's, um, you know, it doesn't, it's nothing, it's not fun. <laughs> it reaches the not fun and they're not sustainable. Point. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. And we are meeting in, well, we'll we're in August. Ah, uh, that's terrifying. Um, you have just come off the back of a fantastic Darwin Cup. How, how was that? Carnival. yeah Darwin Cup we just we just uh, we just uh, finished the Darwin Cup carnival yesterday with the running of the Darwin Cup it was a um brilliant day um the weather if I can just say the weather this year was the weather, amazing the weather. <laughs> I don't I feel very sorry for all everybody in their one degrees but um you know anything from 28 to 32 days it was um it was sensational the weather here in Darwin for this cup carnival and um, it was a very, it was a, a wonderfully successful carnival for, for the brand. Um, lots of new clients and um, lots of old clients coming together and um, enjoying their time on track at, at various race days across the carnival. And uh, we had our uh, finals, uh, overall finals of, of all the fashions events uh, yesterday. And I had uh, two clients, uh, one being the overall winner and one taking out the runner up and then another client taking out uh, best millinery for the day. So it was um, wonderfully successful for the clients and, um, you know, they, they all love to send me messages of um, thank you. Thank you. But I'm like, no, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, congratulations. It's all you. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and for that process, is this something they've been planning for months in ahead or yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, most of the the uh, most of my Darwin clients contact me around February. Um, uh, obviously, the the cup is run on the first um, Monday of August, pretty much every year. So it's um, it's a long time, <laughs> but uh, they they know that they need to get in early. Um, it's uh, it's just that time of the year where things are very, very busy for me and um, spaces book up very quickly. So, so yeah, we, I work with them and, and shuffle them into my schedule. Um, 
one by one and uh, work with each of them and come up with uh, their designs that suit them and their look that they want to want to portray. I sort of talk to them about what what is it they want to sort of exude on the day and um, what's the sort of style they'd like to go with and, and everything. And, and then I put me in it. So um, it's it's always about putting putting your name um, in there and your brand in there and your signature in there. So, you know, it's um, my clients generally um, are really, really um, brilliant for, for that. Um, I don't get too many clients that have such a specific um, design and concept in the head and you know it's a uh, it's it, they the freedom of uh, creativity is is a wonderful thing and um, I'm very lucky that um, yeah, my clients let me have that absolutely that's a gift yeah definitely yeah it is it is a gift if uh, you know it, it we all know that um, we all know what we want but sometimes we just don't know what we want and and it might just take another person's thought process to sort of go, oh, that 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 is actually more like what I want. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's an interesting, um, and that, that's why I like working with clients. Um, I sort of love the u- uniqueness of each of the design, and and um, and I love um, putting a piece of that client's outfit into the design as well and then later on that design might become part of my made to order um range as well so that other people can then go I love that hat that um such and such wall can I have that but make it in black or something like that so you know it's um the the first hat is just is always got a lot of work and a lot of consultation and and you know design concept behind it yeah so how do you break down that time because I think what's because they there's a lot of custom work in that do you know how many of a estimate like you know you can kind of so many clients you fit in you need to dedicate this much time to ready to wear how do you break that down so you don't end up working 18 hours a day yeah got, I got a bit caught out this year unfortunately I um okay, this is, kind of was, this is <laughs> the, the, everybody needs improvement and everybody's always learning this is doesn't matter how long you're in the game <laughs> But uh, I mean, I was in, um, I was at the Magic Millions in January and I thought I'd had plenty of time. Um, I thought I'd get back and just get straight into um, a couple of months of making ready to wear for my ready to wear collection for uh, up here. And whilst I was on the um, Gold Coast, I, I've got nine orders in a row and I sort of was like, oh my gosh. And it was pretty much for straight away when I got back. So so I, I just hit the ground running as soon as I came back from holiday, no time to really think about it. And I've just sort of been running ever since. And the, you know, the clients have um, enjoyed my new online booking system and by they just book themselves in. So they book themselves in um, and then they book their design consultation as well themselves. And so then I get the, the notification that now's the time to talk to them. So it's it just works really well for everybody because um, we're all very busy people. But it just it just meant that I filled up really quickly with all customs and um, I didn't have a chance to I had so many little ready to wear ideas in my head that I just didn't have the chance to get out and it's just one of those things I feel you know I get a lot of people getting closer to carnival um and you probably would as well when you get a lot of last minute people there are people out there that just don't they're just not thinking about being dressed or having a hat four months out from a race event and then by the time they're contacting you you're saying no I'm sorry I haven't got anything for you and I feel terrible (laughs) I just I literally feel terrible saying to them that I haven't got anything and um yeah so it's just a just a time thing it's a matter of it'd be great to uh you know lesson learned I might have to start even earlier next year (laughs) so Darwin Cup is fun and we're looking towards like a spring carnivals next year is there a little break in between here now or are you just keep rolling no um I've 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 literally had to just keep rolling this year um I've I've had we had down cup yesterday today I've had a bit of a break 
good. I've had a, oh, good. I've had a day off today. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I I literally have to get straight back in um, the studio and and keep going because um, the spring orders are all booked out for uh, spring carnival this year as well. So um, I'm very excited to be working uh, with um, a lot of my continuing clients who have been clients over the years, and then I have some new clients as well. So uh, you know they all bring new ideas to me um, and creative freshness as well. So it's, um, yeah, I like it when people go, all right, we did this last year, let's do something different or, you know, it's, what have you got for me this year and things like that. So it's, um, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy, it's a hot, it is a completely different, I, I find it's different as well than the Darwin Cup Carnival because even though it's a race day, Every day, every race, I feel, has its own own, own feel uh, about it. And the southern, southern races, they just have their own sort of feel about the millinery that's required and, and things like that, yeah. How you first learn to make millinery without blocks and it pushes it yeah. forward into a new space as well with that kind of material use. It really does. I mean, I was really fortunate um, to learn my wire work skills from my mum and then also um, I learned from Paris Kine as well so um, you know wire work has has been uh, a strict teaching for me um, it, it's uh, so my, my wire work skills are um, and when I teach it I'm I'm quite strict <laughs> On, on my teaching <laughs> but it it needs I feel it needs to be people need to understand the importance of of their wire work because it really is the core of so many different things whether you are making a piece that focuses on the on the wire and um the fabulous um you know artwork that you create from that or it needs to be the stability and the structural integrity of the actual piece itself so you know, it's, it is quite a, a very important part of millinery. And, you know, over the years, I've refined my skills in it. And, you know, it, it might take a bit of time, but it just understanding your material and your product, you know, you're just going to get better and better at it by just understanding playing with it and working with it and just experimenting with it. Yeah. yeah. And with that experimentation part, you're such a skilled maker and designer is there ever a time when something just doesn't work and then what do you do um so I have I have learned a little trick over the over the years it's basically if it's not working just set it aside for for a little bit it's like it's like when you're angry and you want to write a letter it's like don't write that letter when you're angry and <laughs> maybe wait 24 hours don't throw it out just yet. Don't, don't bung it in the bin just yet. Just set it aside and refresh. It might be a week, it, you know, it might be 24 hours, but I often find that there is a, a, like a bell curve when it comes to making millinery and designs that you've never made before. If it's something that's new and something that's that you, you need to spend a bit of time on either calculating the design or sort of working things out a little bit more of how it's going to work, then, you know, you go through an emotional roller coaster of you're so excited in the beginning how it's going to work out. You, you know, you've got all these images in your brain and um, everything's fantastic and you get part way through the design and there's a little hiccup or something's not quite working how you wanted it to work and you're not at the point where you you can figure that out yet because maybe frustration has taken hold and and then and then of course you don't want to be frustrated you don't want to be making frustrated because it, it's a very difficult place to make from <laughs> exactly and so I always find that if it gets to the point where I, I get quite frustrated with something it just has to sit aside because you spent time and and if I've learned to just trust my instincts over the years and my instincts are usually pretty true and it's like no no you just need a break from this piece and then come back to it refreshed and then you go and then you continue on or you have a little 
a pit at your moment and you're like, ah, that's what I needed to do. I needed to go that way instead of that way. And, you know, and then basically you finish it off and you're like, this is amazing. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's an emotional roller coaster. It's a, it's a full blown ride. <laughs> And looking ahead, what's uh, what's coming up for you and Peacock Millinery? Um, oh, geez. Besides making for spring, <laughs> oh, I'd love to get some spring ready to wear together. Um, I've got some pieces that are part made in there, so I, I'm look. I'm aiming. I'm aiming for the usual first week of September release. So hopefully, hopefully we get. <laughs> that out but um i'm i'm actually going to be heading down south for a couple of race days i love going to the races um uh, we have horses ourselves um so yeah so looking at going um currently looking at going to the sopitel girls day out in melbourne at flemington um i'll be heading to melbourne cup again this year i cannot wait i hope to goodness i can go because if the planes stop or if the borders close, I might lose my mind. But um, and then yeah, I think I've I've got um, some horses starting to run in New South Wales as well, so I might pop over to um, there and have a bit of a look. But that's as far as peacock millinery goes. Um, yeah, I'm not to, not not too sure. I've just my brain's a little bit frazzled at the moment. I've just come off the season and and now I'm just going straight into the into the next. But hopefully more tutoring is in the um is in the future for people. I still get a lot of people asking for different um different classes, so I'm currently working out what it is that I would um uh, like to teach people so uh, so yeah so that and uh, collections definitely mm. very exciting congratulations on such a successful season and your amazing winning team it was so good yes yeah, yeah, it's actually it's off to it's off to Singapore after it's um oh, after good. it's done its little tour I um my I have a Singapore uh I have a client in Singapore and um she has uh requested it so yes yeah, so it's it's new home will actually be in Singapore so nice <laughs> very exciting and it's on a bit of a tour at the moment around to some different locations so it's great that it's also got a home when it comes home <laughs> that's right yeah it's great that um it can go and be seen by um you know I think what, what has it got four four different locations around Australia I think yeah. it is um the over first. the next next two months so yeah absolutely fabulous what a great idea yeah so good well thank you so much for joining us to talk hats again it was wonderful to say hi and to hear about all your amazing creations lovely lovely to chat with you always Lauren Thank you for listening to this episode of Millinery Info with Belinda. Thank you to our wonderful podcast sponsors for their support. Judith M. Millinery Supply House, Hat Academy, Best Western Apollo Bay Motel and Apartments, Louise McDonald Milliner, House of Adorn, Hatter's Millinery Supplies, Lifted Millinery, Be Unique Millinery, Hats by Lico, Hat Bags and Millinery Australia. You can find a link to each of these businesses in your show notes. It's either in the podcast app or through our website. If you've been enjoying listening to this podcast series, I'd like you to find if you've been enjoying listening to this podcast series, I'd like to invite you to sign up to become a patron of Millinery Info. If you head over to www.patreon.com forward slash millinery info, it will show all of the Patreon levels in your local currency. We have a few options available. These include a small thank you to Millinery Info. The next tier up is Millinery Info, you inspire me all the way up to becoming a podcast sponsor. Thank you so much to our current supporters for making these episodes possible. I'm your host, Lauren Ritchie, and thank you for joining me for this episode of Millinery Info today. I look forward to talking hats with you again soon.